Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for tuning into this video. And if you are new to my channel, my name is Mbali Kleshebangu. Please do subscribe to my channel. I would highly appreciate that. All right, so let's get on right onto it. So today I ain't talking about nothing depressing, no coronavirus and anything like that, but do stay safe guys, like it's getting real. Anyway, so today, first of all, I got my laptop down here because there's a lot of information we gotta get through. Don't worry, the video is gonna be quick, hopefully. So that's why I, I wrote a lot of notes. So from time to time, I will be facing down because I got my notes down here. Like, a girl's trying to hook y'all up, okay? So yes, today's video is titled uh, 10 books that I've read that have changed my life. As I promised you in my last video, here we are. So book number one is a book called Rich Dad, Poor Dad by Robert Kiyosaki. Alright, so we have heard about this Rich Dad, Poor Dad book, but we've probably never read it, you know, but it's a great book. And this book has taught, taught me how to make money, how to keep money, basically, you know. It's about uh, it's a book about financial freedom and how to be rich or how to be successful where finance is concerned. Because do you know what I realized, right? I realized that in school, they never taught us how to actually make money. Yes, we did learn accounting. We did all the business studies, the business management and everything. But we did not learn how to make and keep money consistently throughout your life we were just taught that go to work live from check to check and that's just it you know so robert breaks down how to make money in this book how to stay making money and he discourages us or does not believe okay because the book is obviously in his view of life so he does not believe that people should go to work unless you actually love your job unless you are doing your dream job um he just says if you want to make money you have to have your own business invest in stocks and in, invest in property own property and that's how it happens because he believes that your assets should pay your liabilities for example let's say i own a block of flats and i don't work so the the rent that i get from my flats will pay my rent the rent that I get from that block of flats will pay all my bills, will pay my car installments. So that's what he calls your money working for you, you and not you working for money. Because that's what we do. We just work for money. Paycheck after paycheck. You just can't wait. And that's just um, life. However, he brings a new order and he changes how we see money. Because for our example, um, this book has taught me to cancel all that I have learned when I was young. I was taught that money is the root of all evil. Uh, rich people are bad. If you have money, you are bad. And that might be true, but it, 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 it made us so scared to be rich. Because if you want to be rich, that means you got to kill people, you know, do all the bad stuff. But no, not really. You just got to work hard. Be smart about everything that you do. So I do recommend you read this book. All right, so book number two is an amazing book. Uh, this is a book by Napoleon Hill called Think and Grow Rich. <sighs> this book deserves a video of its own and even that video would never be enough for me to just sum up the words or summarize the book. It's just an amazing book. And most of all, most of the people that I look up to, or the most successful people in the world, will always speak of this book and how this book changed their lives, you know? And I do testify to that. I second that 150%. This book breaks down, how many steps does it break down? It breaks down 13 steps towards um, success, towards riches. And so what Napoleon believes is the first way to be successful you have to have that burning desire within. So what does he mean by burning desire? He means that you need to be so obsessed 
with what you want be so obsessed with your goals that that's the only thing you focus on and in that way you are going to put your utmost energy and your soul in it and you will make sure that it happens so how does he he see you doing this what does he say he says that uh first of all you need to change your mindset about life don't think um things are impossible there is nothing that is impossible right uh, I need to close my window because I live right next to the main road. Okay, sorry about that. Uh, Alright, so first of all, Napoleon says that you need to have that burning desire. Be obsessed with your goals. Be obsessed with anything that you want in life. That's the first thing. The burning desire. Secondly, change your mindset. We always believe that it's uh, impossible or the sky is the limit. Change your mindset. If you believe that it can happen, it can happen. Trust. Formulate a strategy or a plan. Formulate how you're going to get from where you are to where you want to be and follow and commit to that plan. So, obviously, that's... Um, that's how it works in the ideal world however we don't live in an ideal world so sometimes things don't work out the way you plan them so that's why you have to have plan a plan b plan c however do not change the goal change your plans do you get what i'm saying so that's what napoleon is saying in this book and so much so much so much more so book number three is one of my favorites as well well all of the books on this list are my favorites <laughs> So this book is called The Richest Man in Babylon by George Samuel Clarkson. Amazing. This book was written in 1926. And what I love about this book is that it has seven principles. And those principles are still relevant today. It's a classic book written in the 19th century. However, you can still apply all those, those principles or techniques that he suggests in the book. And they still relevant. They would still work. So one of my favorite, which is uh, the first principle, is that... So this principle says, save at least 10% of all your earnings or your salary for the future. So this is obviously a, a financial literacy book. Talks, um, it talks about financial freedom, how to use money, how to save money, how to invest, you know? So the first principle says, save at least 10% of your earnings or salary for the future. So what I mean is that um, in this life we live, we, we get our salary. The first thing we do, we pay our bills, debit orders, we pay the rent, we pay cars and all of that. But we actually forget to pay ourselves first. And by paying yourself, I'm not saying take the money and go pamper yourself or go buy yourself something. Pay yourself in the sense of saving. Take that money, whether it's 10%, whether it's 20% of your salary, however much that you can afford, take that first before you pay your bills and put it into an account or put it away somewhere. That's a way of you paying yourself. Then you know that you have something stashed for the future. Every time you get some sort of, whether you are a freelancer, whether you, I don't know, you're working, and you get paid every fortnight, every week, every month, take that 10% and put it in the bank for that emergency that might come because, I mean, we live in a very unpredictable world, right? So, yes, that is the book and do read it. All right, book number four is a book by Stephen Carvey called The Seven Habits of Highly Successful People. Wonderful book, uh, but it's a very complicated book. At first, I, I did not understand a word. But I knew that this book has been highly recommended, so I was like, I will read it. I might not understand what he's saying in the beginning. However, I, I kept on listening to it and I started grasping his language, first of all. I started grasping the context. So at first, it does seem like a very high level, but just stick at it, you know, unless you're like real genius, you know, these big words. And sometimes you need to know the meaning of the word to understand the whole sentence, you know what I'm saying? So, but let's go back to the book. So this book, um, as this, uh, the title suggests, um, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, he speaks of how you can be effective in your life how you can be effective in other people's lives and ultimately how you can be effective in the world. 
So meaning change yourself to change the lives of others, to change the world. Uh, my favorite principle in this book is moving from three stages of dependence. So there's dependence, independence, and interdependence. Because normally, uh, so let me make a practical example. When you're living at home with your parents, you are dependent on your parents. Or uh, you are dependent on your job to earn a living. Then from there, you have to, in life, you have no choice. You have to move from dependence to de independence where you depend entirely on yourself. You move from home to your own apartment, you're on your own two feet, you are independent now. So we like in life, we think once you are independent, you have made it. You like, yes, I'm popping, I'm my own woman, I'm my own man, I got this. However, Stephen Covey takes it a step further and speaks of interdependence, where you work together to make a huge difference. So for example, at, at your workplace, your boss is dependent on you and you are dependent on your boss. That's an interdependent environment. When you start a company, when you start a business, you might start it solo, being just dependent on yourself. You're the only person doing everything, but at some point you will need other hands and that's where you move from being independent to interdependent, where you work together to make a huge difference. So. Yeah, that's just one of the seven principles and the book is phenomenal. So yeah, let's move on to book number five. So book number five is a book called Everything is Figure Outable by Marie Folio. Um, I listen to her podcasts, I watch her YouTube channel and she's a great businesswoman. So that's, she's first a businesswoman than anything else. So she's amazing. I listen to this book on Audible. Well, half of these books are listened to on Audible. And I love her because her book is so chilled. She's not formal. She's just herself. The Marie that you see on her YouTube channel is the Marie that you hear on her audiobook. Because she, she's the one that narrates the book. And I love that, you know? So she cusses. I love people that are so chilled that they don't mind swearing. She's very funny. And she teaches us, as the book suggests, that... You might think things are not figure outable, but everything is figure outable. It might seem impossible. You just gotta dig a little deeper. It's in there somewhere. Formulate your plan and get it done. So yeah, that's a great book. And then book number six is a book by Robin Sharma called The 5AM Club. Robin Sharma also wrote the book called The Monk That Sold His Ferrari. All right, so this book, Robin Sharma, highlights how important the first hour of your morning is. So in the book, he suggests that we all, um, we all wake up at like 5 a.m. And in that power hour from 5 a.m. to 6 a.m., you must utilize that hour as best as possible. So he suggests that we meditate, we exercise, we journal, you know, you do all the things that are going to ensure that you start your day on a positive note, you start your day on a mental strong note. So my thing was, I read this book, I started doing this, however, I am not a person that wakes up at five o'clock, let me not lie. And with all these books and just books in general, you need to fit them into your lifestyle. You know, so I woke up at 7. I woke up at 7 a.m. But I still practiced the principles that he, he puts in the book. Even though I did not wake up at 5 a.m., this book was amazing. I reaped a lot of great fruit. You know, like all these habits are, you don't see an instant uh, you don't see an instant change, but a long-term cha long change in the sense that meditating is so soothing. You know, you cleanse your soul. Your mind is clear. Journaling, which I still find hard, I won't lie. Um, you, it's like a word vomit, all your thoughts. Things that you didn't even know you were thinking about, you just... just write them out and it just shows you how much your, your your head is just running with thoughts all day long so journaling is also great and exercising i can't say i'm the best person at exercising but i try i try my best all right so the next book is called can't hurt me by david goggins so um i love this book because david goggins in this book teaches us to 
um, get used to pain. You know, it's it's weird, yes, but he's like, face the pain and get over it. So what David Goggins says is that when you exercise, for example, maybe I'm doing sit-ups, I'll say, okay, no, today, this morning, I'm going to do 60, um, 60 sit-ups. He's like, you can only start counting when you feel the pain. So normally you'll do like 20 sit-ups and then you start feeling your abs like tightening and it's just like painful. He's like, that's when you got to start, um, you got to start counting. And another thing that we do, whenever we feel physical pain or emotional pain, we want to escape and run away. He's like, no, hang in there. Be there. Feel the pain till it ends. You get what I'm saying? So I love this. He just says, sometimes life is hard. Don't escape that. Don't escape to alcohol or drugs just to escape the hardness. Be there. Be present 100% and say, you know what, I'm going to fight this and I'm going to get through it. So um, for me, what I like, so because I live on the sixth floor and there's no lift in my building. So it's very hard sometimes to like climb those stairs to the sixth floor and sometimes you just want to stop. I just think of David Goggins. He's like, have colors. Keep going. When you feel pain, that's when you must go even harder. I just go up those stairs. I'm like, David Goggins said I should never stop, you know? So <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. Yeah. All right, so book number eight is another book by Napoleon Hill. It's called Outwitting the Devil. So the, this book, I must say, was the most controversial book because it had um, a religious connotation to it. Even just the title, Outwitting the Devil. That's like, oh girl, I'm good with that. But this book is a very great eye-opener. So it's a huge metaphor, by the way. It's a huge metaphor in the sense that Napoleon Hill is interviewing the devil. Napoleon Hill in the book is a human being. And the devil, this is how I interpret the book. The devil is the fear in your mind. So the devil, um, what can I say, exposes how he controls, how he controls our minds, how he gets people to be addicted to alcohol, cigarettes, drugs, how he makes you not do what you have to do, basically how he convinces you to procrastinate. So by Napoleon asking him all these questions, the devil is exposing how he controls our mind. So that way, Napoleon is exposing how the devil controls you and you by that are able to use that as an antidote to let go or to to escape that so by letting go of the fear within you are letting go of the control of the devil over your mind i know it sounds a lot complicated but yeah you basically outwitting outsmarting the devil because he has exposed his ways on how he controls you that way you know that whenever you have a negative thought or whenever you're procrastinating that's the devil or the fear speaking so when it says don't do that get up right then and there and do it it's very hard it's like a muscle that you always need to exercise but at some point it gets easier you you get a, a strong will right so that's the book um so the ninth book is a book called the four agreements by don miguel rue loved this book this book is short and sweet and straight to the point um so this book is about four agreements in life so let me just read them out agreement number one be impeccable with your word so what does that mean that means mean what you say and say what you mean keep your promises when you say you're going to do this do that do just that you know be a woman or a man of your word uh, agreement number two don't take anything personal I love that for me I just I think that's my favorite um, agreement so by not taking anything personal you are so free from all that negativity in life you know because there's a saying that says hurt people hurt so when someone says something wrong or something hurtful to you, don't take that personal. See it as that person has a problem with themselves and not you. So they are projecting that onto you. So don't take it personal. Because now if you're going to take that personal, you'll be the one suffering and thinking that there's something wrong with you. Egbe me, there's nothing wrong with you. It's just that person. So agreement number three is don't make assumptions. 
yes sometimes in life it's good to ask if you don't know ask don't make assumptions hurry whoever and whoever broke up because of this just ask you know and don't make assumptions that someone don't, doesn't like you so sometimes it's actually a good thing to ask questions don't just assume because assumptions are a hundred percent incorrect most of the time and then the last agreement is always do your best in everything that you do always put up um, just always do put in your a hundred percent and sometimes your hundred percent is not enough then just go further it's like when I was still in school I would always do my best in like my exams or my tests and I'd find out that my 100% actually gives me 65% which is not good enough so I had to dig in deeper and go above my best so but always do your best your best should be the minimum <clears throat> your best should be uh, what can I say the foundation nothing below that do you get what I'm saying yeah all right so the last book is called big magic by elizabeth gilbert the same author who wrote the book eat pray love my all-time fave i love the movie so elizabeth here speaks on creativity and being an artist and how uh being this creative or this artist we put so much pressure on ourselves and our art she just says sometimes you just have to relax don't take your art so seriously I know that's a contradiction but art is supposed to be something that just frees you you know sometimes you put so much pressure on yourself to not putting out your art or not putting out your pictures out there if you're a photographer not uploading videos on time if you are a youtuber that's being a content creator but she just says take a breath relax sometimes inspiration doesn't come when you need it do you get what I'm saying? So she takes you through the process of how you deal with that as an artist. And I just love this book. I love Elizabeth Gilbert. And what I loved about this book was that she was the one narrating the whole book, the whole audio book. So I was like, yes, girl, that's what's up. So yeah. So um, those are my 10 books that I've read. And right now I'm currently, I'm currently reading... I'm currently listening, let me look for this book, to a book called uh, Money and the Law of Attraction on Audible. Yes, that's the book I'm listening to currently. And yeah, books are great. You know, that's the only way you can be a better you. As much as we go to school and we graduate and all of that, there's nothing really, like personally, there's nothing really I learned from school that I can apply in my everyday life. So that's where these authors and these gifted writers come into your life and you read their books and you get some sort of inspiration. The book does not say live your life as I do. Just get the, that principle, that aspect, you know, that you can put into your life that can make you a better person. So that's why books are just eternal i mean i read a book that was written in 1926 and i still apply its principles till today like books are endless and they will always be so i do encourage you guys to read and even if you don't read books like i don't like a physical book i don't have the time so that's why so that's why i prefer listening to audiobooks whenever you walk to work or you're exercising taking a jog you're cleaning Put in your earphones, listen to that book, grow your mind, grow your life, and just, you know, win in life. Just know more, basically. It's, it's the thing of just wanting to know more, being addicted to getting knowledge, being curious, and, and you know, just being curious, <laughs> basically. Um, all right, so that is the end of my video. I hope this is going to help you, and you might just read one or two of these books. Trust me, they will change the way you see things, and yeah. Please do comment down below if you have any other books that you think I might want to read. And yeah, love you guys.